We had a question about um, how do I solve for Q in question two. Didn't intend to make that rhyme, but um, this was about applied problem eight on page 115. The Bavarian crystal works stuff. When you're asking about solving for Q, for like part A, it's saying what is the optimal level of production of wine decanters? Right. Like, I got confused and I was plugging in 70 and that's obviously not right. Let's get it back into the realm of generalities and not questions specific to this. Here's the data we just used for that previous video. And it said actually in the question on page 112 that the price of X is $2 per unit, price of Y is $10 per unit. Well, let me say the wage for hours worked is $2, $2 per hour. Sounds like I was working for my dad. And so we could do a couple of different ways of measuring this. We could do like a, a total, I don't know, total wages paid to everybody per hour for the total number of hours that are worked. So it'll just be $2 times the number of hours worked. I'll just copy that all the way down. So when we have had 12 hours of work done at $2 wage, then $24 total. We're trying to figure out the optimal number of hours, I guess, to work. And I'm not sure if this is going to work perfectly, but we'll see what happens. So I, I have a sense of what the total benefit is, and I have a sense of what the marginal benefit is. So I'll put MB up here also. So the marginal benefit will be how much additional output is generated from an additional hour of work that's performed. So here's going to be my marginal benefit column. And in your question, you need to, well, to do any of these optimizations, you need to figure out marginal benefits and marginal costs and set them equal to each other. So I've got my marginal benefit here. Having to pay for these hours of work is the cost side of things. So the wage is $2 an hour. Total wages would also be like a total cost. And the marginal cost, you could say is um, what is the additional wage from one extra hour of work. I'll post this Excel sheet uh, somewhere also. So I, let's see, I can't really find it for this one, but I can say sort of a similar equation as I had here where it was, and let me go back to the slides. The marginal cost equation was very similar. Marginal benefit was the change in the total benefit divided by the change in the activity. Marginal cost was the change in the total uh, total cost instead, not benefit. This should say total cost. I didn't actually make these slides. This should say change in total cost divided by the change in the activity. That's what it says up here. They just had a typo in this formula. So if I come back here, it's going to be a very similar type of equation where I say, well, what is the change in the total cost? So that total wage minus that total wage divided by increasing the activity. Well, again, the activity was the hours work went from zero hours to two hours. So again, the numerator will be the change in the total cost. Well, total cost went from zero dollars up to four divided by the change in the activity. The change in the activity was we went from zero hours worked to two hours worked. So these are gonna be in dollars also because I, my total wage went from $0 paid to $4 paid, but the hours went from zero hours up to two. So for every additional hour, there was a $2 increase. When I go from two hours work to four hours of work, that's an additional two hours. And total wage went from $4 up to eight. So on a per hour basis, that's also two. They're all gonna be two because the wage was two. So every hour of work has this $2 wage expense. Let me, so I'll change things a little bit um, because no one gets paid $2 an hour. That's ridiculous and because it's not working in my table either. So I'm going to say, let's presume that people get paid what I used to get paid when I did work with my dad, which was $5 an hour. And so now I have to change this column to be $5 an hour and I'll change all the other ones. So going from zero hours of work to two hours of work means the total wage goes from zero dollars up to 10, but on a per hour basis, an additional hour increased, uh, the marginal cost was an additional $5 for that additional extra hour of work. And again, it's true all the way down the line, $5 each 
because every hour should always get have to cost me what the wage is. So hours went from zero to 12, and my Y values is gonna be my cost or my total wage increase. That's gonna look a little different because I think in all the other pictures in the book, they show these things crossing, mm -hmm. which hasn't happened yet in my picture, but you can see that it, it probably would. If I were to extend this chart out a little bit farther, this orange, I mean my cost line is the orange one. That's gonna keep going up at a consistent, uh, constant rate. My blue line is eventually gonna start getting pulled down, so eventually they would cross. So it, it will eventually look like a similar picture from the book, but don't really need to worry about that. So here's my totals, my total benefit, or my total product, we said, and my total wage. And so, again, for my picture here, I could say, well, how do I know what's the, what's the optimal choice of how, many, um, output, how much output to produce? Well, obviously, when the total product and the total wage are equal, like it is at the origin, and like it would be way out here somewhere, Whenever they cross, that means that your benefit is equal to your cost. Your total benefit is equal to your total cost. In that case, you, it, you, know, you don't come out ahead at all. You don't get any additional benefit at all. Anytime the blue line is above the orange, that's a choice of output where the benefit I'm getting is greater than the cost that I'm incurring. So anytime the blue line is above the orange, it means that I'm profiting, basically, because I'm getting more benefit than the cost that I'm incurring. All of these choices of output in this picture here so far are giving me more output than cost or more benefit than cost. So that's good. I would be, I would be happy with any of these choices more so than if I didn't produce anything at all because I didn't get any net benefit there. So any of these choices would be, would be good. What well, would be okay. They would lead to me to have more benefit than cost, but I want to get the optimal because again, the question problem eight said, what is the optimal amount of production? And I think our question was, what is the optimal output to pick for that question, which I'm not going to tell you. But here, I have my, well, again, so I'm, if I'm trying to figure out the optimum choice of output down here, I want to not only find where the blue line is above the orange, but where the blue line is the most above the orange, where there's the biggest gap between these two. And I'm going to hold my hand up to my screen showing how far apart my fingers are, and I want to get the farthest apart distance between the blue and the orange, but you guys can't see me do that. So just imagine this happening on the picture. So I want to find the biggest gap between the blue line and the orange. And you could maybe eyeball that, or use your fingers like I was just doing. That's a little imprecise, but the nice thing about doing these marginals, and I probably went into this a bit in the video, is that calculating marginals is a way of calculating the slopes of these lines and the furthest apart that the two lines are going to be is where the slopes of the lines are parallel to each other. But when I'm down at two units of output, well, they're far, they're kind of far apart, not very, not compared to some of the other units of output. And the other thing I noticed is not only are they not very far apart, but the blue line is a lot steeper than the orange. In four units, they're farther apart than they were at two. And even though the blue line is still steeper than the orange line, it's not as. I mean, the blue line is a little bit closer to the orange line steepness than the steep, the slopes of the two lines were at two units of output. So as I get closer to what the, the farthest distance apart that these two lines are, the slopes of the line start to become parallel. And so if I can find the place where these two lines are parallel, that's gonna kind of guarantee me to be the farthest distance apart where I get the, the most benefit, the gap between the total benefit and the total cost is the highest. So I get the biggest net benefit total. Um, so calculating the slopes will allow me to do that. If I can set those two slopes equal to each other, then I can be guaranteed that I'm finding this net benefit being the largest or the gap between total benefit and total cost being the largest. I want to figure out where the marginals or the slopes are equal to each other. And they don't, I can't see it exactly in my picture here, and I did that on purpose because, well, I have all my marginal costs are all five, and none of my marginal benefits are five exactly. So what I can do though is do another picture and I've got to do, let's see, hours work, let's select my data, edit. So my title will just be the marginal benefit part of it. X values will be my hours worked. Probably not gonna like this first entry, so I'll just do that. And the Y values will be this additional benefit here. 
and I will look at my column in a second. I want to add another variable, which would be my marginal cost. My X values, again, will be the hours of work. The Y values will be these marginal cost column. Hit OK, OK. Bring it up here. And it's got a weird shape to it. But I guess my total product was not linear, so I get a weird looking marginal benefit line here. I am getting a graph that I hoped for because I've got my marginal cost was all constant at five units. So the orange line is my marginal cost line. That's going to look a little different from the, the pictures that you've seen because on page 110, it's a, prob it's a uh, problem in the back of the book. But you can see the marginal benefit line slopes down, but their marginal cost line slopes up, which I think a lot of the other marginal cost lines in the chapter had this upward slope to it. They don't have to look like that. You can get a marginal cost line that looks just like ours, the one that does here. Uh, but I'm getting this marginal cost line that's flat. And I am getting, I mean, I saw my marginal benefit column decrease. I mean, it went from 15 units to 12 to 9 to 6. So it is falling. And if I can kind of put these two next to each other. So here's my totals on the top. And here's my marginals on the bottom. I had to skip that first one because dividing by zeros, they don't like that. But if I, again, if I look at my top line of the totals and figure out where these two lines are the farthest apart, it looks you know, six, they're pretty far apart. Eight, they are. Ten, it's kind of hard to know. Maybe if I made my graph a little bit bigger, I could get a better sense of it. But again, just eyeballing, it's kind of hard to know where these two lines are the farthest apart. I can kind of tell that at 12 units, they're getting a little bit closer together. So I wouldn't pick 12. But anywhere between like seven and 11, I don't really know. It's kind of hard to tell just by looking. But when I compare the marginals, I, I know what I'm shooting for is to have the slopes of these lines equal to each other. So when I look at the marginals and the marginals tell me what the slopes are, then all I have to look for is where the slopes are equal is where the marginal benefit line is equal to the marginal cost line. And that's where they intersect. So here it's happening right at nine units, it looks like. And again, if I, if I look back at my chart up at the top, I could maybe convince myself that nine units is where they are the farthest apart. Again, it's kind of hard to know just by looking at it, but I'm, pretty much guarantee that that's where it is when I look at the chart at the bottom, because I can see that that's where they're crossing. Again, if I, if I thought maybe 11, they looked kind of far apart. I could, if I go to, well, I don't have 11 here, but you can see that at 11 units, obviously the orange line and the blue line are not equal to each other. And at eight units, they're obviously not equal to each other also, or seven units, they're not equal to each other. But right there at nine where they cross is, is what I'm looking for. If I'm trying to figure out what's the optimal number of these things to produce, because the question said, was the optimum level of production of wine decanters? That's a completely different question than what I'm doing here. The optimal um, number of hours worked, I guess, was this question. And I would just say, well, I get the biggest benefit relative to cost. I get the biggest net benefit when the slopes of the total benefit, total cost lines are equal or where marginal benefit equals marginal cost, which in this case looks like it's about nine hours worked. So if I can have my people work for nine hours, then I will get the biggest gap between total benefit and total cost. So that'll give me my optimal number of hours worked. Hopefully that makes some sense. Again, you have to kind of be careful with how you're looking at these things because in this top chart, I'm looking for where these two lines are the farthest apart because those are the totals. And in the bottom chart, I'm looking for where the lines cross each other. And so, because these are the marginals. So you always have to remember if you're comparing, if you're looking at a picture of the marginals, you want to figure out where they cross because you want to get those slopes equal to each other. So where does the, the, the marginals are, the uh, lines of the slopes. So if I'm looking at marginals, I've got to figure out where they cross. I don't want to find where the marginals are the farthest apart. And in the upper graph, I don't want to find where those two curves cross. So you have to kind of keep that in the back of your mind. If you're looking at totals versus marginals, what sorts of, what, sort of, what tells you what the optimum is. So if I'm looking at totals, it's the gap between the two. If I'm looking at marginals, it's where they cross.